if the Nordic god of thunder, Thor, had had a retarded stepson from an earlier marriage, he would have called him Lavorg, which is a roundabout way of saying this is a really stupid name for a really awesome car. In fact, if you want an ordinary SUV to just feel entirely mundane, go for a drive in a Lavorg first. It's certainly not perfect, and we'll get into that in a minute, but it is one of the best family transport options that I can imagine. It's a WRX wagon. I mean, what else do you really need to know? But before you click away and go back to downloading pornography, do you want the good news or the bad news? Let's flip like we did last summer, you know? Heads, the good news first, and tails, we'll pull its pants down right now and give it a discount vasectomy right through its wallet, just like a good ex-wife. Are you ready? Well, that's pretty much ruined the magic of fake news reading, hasn't it? Good help is very hard to find. I mean, anyone would think I'm doing this inside a garage and not a multi-million dollar television newsroom. That's a bit more like it. So the good news, it's a WRX wagon, which means a Lavorg is a practical five-seat well, a practical four-seater with an impractical fifth extra seat in the middle of the back for someone you really hate all the way across the Nullarbor. But it's a practical family car that you can punt. I mean, seriously punt. It's a WRX wagon and that means it's friggin' awesome to drive. And the wagon bit is actually big enough to be really useful in that landed gentry breeder context. To verify this for literally shits and giggles, I drove north on the freeway for about 45 minutes in the Lavorg GTS Spec B. I picked up 12, count them, 12 bags of chook shit for the garden. It wasn't even Christmas from one of the local boutique chook shit vendors. Don't tell Subaru Australia's PR guy. He wouldn't see the funny side because it smelled quite distinctive in there. Nothing I like more than me and the missus and 12 bags of chook shit crammed in the back like the worst smelling oversized sardines in the fastest tin can with symmetrical all-wheel drive you can imagine. Having a punt and hoping like hell nobody liberaches us from the rear. Is there any other way to be liberace At the lights, perhaps. You want the definition of family-friendly practicality? Well, that's pretty much it. So if you want a traditional family SUV to feel like a Valium enema on top of a Rohypnol milkshake, drive a Lavorg first. They're about the same price and they're about as practical as each other, especially if you don't need the SUV ground clearance. It's a WRX wagon. Australian families buy SUVs because, I don't know, SUVs. Keeping up with the Joneses, whatever. If you want to overtake the Joneses on the outside in the wet with a one finger salute as you pass, buy a Lavorg. So without getting bogged right down in it, everything I said about WRX with a CVT, check it out there, it pertains to Lavorg. Performance about the same. It's the same powertrain and there's only 50 kilos in it. There's only 3% in power to weight. You'd never even feel that. It goes like a WRX, but it's a wagon. There's 45 series rubber on Lavorg and 40 on WRX, however, and WRX also has one inch wider wheels, but the same width tires. Go figure. Lavorg just feels super crisp and composed in all kinds of situations, packed with shit in the back, doesn't matter. It does what you tell it to. It's engaging. Its limits are way ahead of most drivers. Lots of safety margin there. And it's got EyeSight, Subaru's brilliant safety system that gives you fatigue warning, lane departure warning, and adaptive cruise control, etc. Really impressive. Slightly annoying, and that's a reasonable trade-off if it saves your life one day. I highlighted some of what EyeSight can do in my Robot Cars report. 
So there's two and a half different flavors of Lavorg basically. The GT, that's the base model. You get fabric seats, a smaller touch screen, but not poverty. It still gets a proximity key, a reversing camera, and 24 different buttons on the steering wheel. 24. I remember that because not even with every finger, every toe, and all three wedding vegetables engaged, is it sufficient to count all those buttons. And in any case, this is quite a poor excuse with the constabulary for having the wedding veggies out in public as it happens. Anyway, it's going to take you a while to become a maestro with that wheel, which is D-shaped, and frankly the shape is a fail. Good for a race car, but kind of horrible on a road car where some hand positioning is required. Bit of a triumph of marketing over function there, sadly. The GTS adds much of the stuff that Subaru calls premium elsewhere in the lineup. The bigger touchscreen, leather, side camera assistance system, rain sensing wipers, plus some Bilstein suspension bits. It's about six grand more for GTS, which is a pretty good investment if you've got the cash, in my view. GT is okay. GTS feels decidedly premium. GTS spec B is kind of half a step forward again. Nine different STI upgrade bits on that car. They're all cosmetic. You get black 18 inch STI wheels, but it's kind of strange seeing STI wheels and no red STI calipers inside them. Anyway, STI body kit, red STI starter button, STI reminder on the shifter, like that. It's four grand for spec B, and I'm not totally sold that this is an easy spend to justify. But hey, if it's only money. Now, for an important update on the continuously variable transmission, let's go back to Chrome Dome, live from Chicken Shitsville, where Jethro and Cletus play dueling banjos at the Workers' Club every Friday night. And there's a spit roast every night ending in Y. Everyone not from around here is welcome. Um, correction. Everyone not from around here is welcome to be the roast. Chromie, I love this powertrain, you know, lifted from the CVT WRX. It's awesome. But every time I say that, there is a tsunami of comments, isn't there? There's a whole bunch of people who go, oh, what was Subaru thinking? The CVT's awful. I can't stand that. I would never own a CVT. Well, I'll tell you what. There's one thing a CVT can do that no other transmission can, and it makes it awesome. Here it is. So the point about this is people bitch and moan about Subaru putting a CVT in its vehicles, especially in anything with performance intent. But I have to tell you, when you look at getting the power down to the road, if you really want to make shit happen, the engine needs to operate at wide open throttle and peak power revs for as long as possible. So let's go live to the video replay and see how much time that engine spends up near its 5,600 RPM point, where it delivers its 197 kilowatts of peak power. Yeah. Anytime you're ready. For fuck's sake. You just cannot do that in a manual. Imagine all the time you'd waste changing gears. Imagine all the time you'd waste away from the critical 5,600 make maximum shit happen revs. CVTs, if they're tuned right, and this one is, are just awesome at getting the power down. It might not feel like it, but they are. I mean, bring on the troll shit on this. I know it's out there. I can feel it. But there's the evidence, and it's pretty hard to argue with. Another point that deserves a mention, the wing mirrors. Subaru does a brilliant job with this, moving them away from the A-pillars. And it's a great move that reduces the visual mass of the bottom of the A-pillar, allowing you to see stuff. Stuff that might kill you, like a car with a texting driver not paying attention, just there at 45 degrees. Clever little bit of detail design. So, big tick, well done there, Subaru. Now, 
Lest you think this review is getting just a little bit sucky, let's look at the other side of the coin. Because there is a tail on this coin. That name, really, Lavorg. Was that the best you could do? An alleged portmanteau of the words legacy, revolution, touring. Japanese car companies really need to engage fluent English speakers before making any further mistakes of this nature. One colleague who I won't name, Brett Davis from Performance Drive, performancedrive.com.au, great website. He put it to me like this. He said, who's gonna wear a Lavorg jacket? He's got a point. They could have called it, I don't know, suggestion from left field, WRX wagon or WRX Tourer, or WRX Estate, or WRX Box on the friggin' back. Anything I think but Lavorg. Given the immense investment in the WRX nameplate and the unimpeachable affordable performance pedigree that this badge represents, over 24 years of existence, just speculating, they might have kicked a real goal with that especially as there's currently no WRX hatch. So there's also a space saver spare tyre, and that's not a real win for Australia with our long traditional distances between A and B when we're traversing the big family getaway. You know, undignified, getting a flat, unloading your two dead bodies, your 12 bags of chook shit, the two kids you love and the one you hate, sitting in the middle, at the back, whatever, and then strapping on a pizza cutter spare tyre and driving all the way home at 80 kilometres per hour, on the freeway, at night, in the rain. Tell me that's dignified. And the service interval, six months and 10,000 kilometres. I'm certain there's no engineering or metallurgical justification for that. I'm tipping there's some fear of a dealer network revolt if the concept of 12 months servicing ever gets seriously mooted, or the quid pro quo that might be demanded by way of compensation if they do. However, Subaru has a great reputation for looking after its customers in the event that anything goes wrong, and that's a real plus, even though servicing is quite expensive. And finally, I guess, the CVT. Some people just don't like CVTs, and that might be irrational. It might simply be speculation that CVTs won't hold up over time. There's no evidence of that, but I understand the reservation, especially considering all that Nissan and Jatco have done, for example, for reputational damage to the CVT name. And they don't seem especially happy at low speed CVTs against heavy loads. You know, backing a trailer up a steep driveway, not fun. So, in the face of this foreseeable reservation in the market, Subaru could have, I don't know, offered a manual transmission, especially as, fortuitously enough, one is available right now in the WRX, the R&D equivalent of cutting and pasting, you know? The obvious benefit on the showroom floor being, sir, I understand your reservation, so can I interest you in the manual transmission instead? And still, I guess these are comparatively minor criticisms, given the WRX size serve of awesome that comes pre-packaged in every Subaru Lavorg. Make mine the GTS. It's just a joy to drive, even without the chook shit in the back. Not too edgy to drive every day or in traffic. Did I mention that it reminds me somewhat of a WRX wagon? Anyway, they could have called it that, don't you think? So. If you'd like to save thousands on a Lavorg or any other good car, contact me at autoexpert.com.au. It's what we do. Get new cars cheap in Australia. And CVT haters, please queue in an orderly fashion to the right. The comments feed awaits you, and I look forward to reviewing every last one of them. I'd own a Lavorg tomorrow, frankly, but not the jacket. I'm John Cadogan. Thanks for watching.